The versatility of the skill system in Numenera via the Cypher system allows for a great degree of flexibility not only for a single character, but also for an entire adventure as the openness of how skills work in this game allow players and GMs to collaborate on a set of definitions and expectations for how skills will work in their game. This video will break down how skills work in the Cypher system and will suggest some guidance on how you can work with these mechanics as well as some discussion about patterns that appear in Numenera Discovery and Destiny that suggest a taxonomy of skill categories that should offer a bit of clarity and guidance for those who find the malleable nature of skills in this game a little intimidating to work with at first. One of the priorities of the Cypher system is to make task resolution direct and straightforward. In Numenera or any Cypher system game, any given task is ranked on a scale of 0 to 10, with 0 requiring no roll of the die and 10 requiring a combination of incredible skill, effort, and potentially some favorable circumstances to make the task even achievable. Skills are one of three key ways that a character can make tasks easier for them, as highlighted on page 15 of Numenera Discovery. Making the most out of how skills are presented in the game given their open-ended nature can be somewhat of a challenge for new players and GMs. Numenera Discovery broadly defines a skill as a category of knowledge, ability, or activity relating to a task such as climbing, geography, or persuasiveness, and any character can take up to two levels of training in one of these categories, otherwise referred to as skills. One level of training knocks a related task down one step on the difficulty scale, while two levels of training, what the game refers to as specialized, brings the related task down by two steps. Skills do not gate the ability to attempt a task in a related field. The books make clear on multiple occasions that anyone can attempt any task, but skills simply influence how much easier or how much harder that task is based on its categorization. There is, in addition to being trained or specialized in a skill, a negative version of being trained in a skill as well, what the game refers to as an inability, defined in full on page 101 of Numenera Discovery. It's the opposite of being trained. It will increase the difficulty for any task related to what a character has an inability in. Becoming trained in a skill you have an inability in clears the inability status, as it were, and means you're of average capacity in that category now. A character starting with a skill they have an inability in can eventually bring that skill up to a specialized status, but they will have to take that skill once more than a character who starts with no training and no inability in that skill. While skill definitions may be open to interpretation in the game, the mechanics of how they affect difficulty are pretty clear. Being trained in a skill drops the difficulty by one, and being specialized in a skill drops the difficulty by two. Easing a task by two steps, as the book highlights several times, is the most any single skill can lower a difficulty task. But, as is made clear on page 103 of Numenera Discovery and page 119 of Numenera Destiny, multiple skills can be combined for a single task, provided they're applicable. This will likely require a bit of conversation about the expectations of what a character is trained in and how that may assist them. Fortunately, Numenera, perhaps uniquely among other Cypher system games, offers a bit of guidance in determining applicability and expectations for skills. A close reading of Numenera Discovery and Destiny indicates that the book considers that there are at least three kinds of skills. This portion of the video rests somewhere between an interpretation of the rules as written and a set of house rules. Understand that these categories, while potentially helpful in determining the function of the skills in the game and how they may be used, do involve a bit of kitbash language using the text of the book. The first skill category, and one of the most directly described, is mentioned in the book's skill section on page 27 of Numenera Discovery. The section provides a list of more than 30 possible skill fields, but three of them in particular are described as requiring detailed knowledge. Each of these concerning the Numenera itself, the rules as written state that unless training is received from a descriptor, type, or focus, a character is otherwise assumed to start off with an inability in understanding, 
crafting and salvaging Numenera. This reflects the nature of this setting. In the Ninth World, we're told that the Numenera, the mysterious technology left behind by the ancients of previous eras, is so impossibly complex that it can confuse even the brightest minds and appear as reality-bending magical phenomenon to common folk. The Numenera is the magic of the Ninth World, and to reflect its unique complexities and mysteries, it makes sense that understanding the function of, crafting with, or salvaging for Numenera all demand a specific kind of experience, education, or talent. These detailed knowledge skills also make sense mechanically, as the Nano starts off as being trained in understanding Numenera, the Rite in crafting Numenera, and the Delve in salvaging Numenera. There are other ways of getting these skills, such as the mystical slash mechanical descriptor or the builds tomorrow focus as two examples. These options allow those characters who start with training in these detailed knowledge skills to be unique in their interactions with the Numenera, and it helps differentiate them not only from NPCs, but also other PCs, as those who aren't as invested in the Numenera directly will have their own strengths to contribute to the party dynamic. From this, we can state that the first category of skills in the game are the detailed knowledge skills, named after the phrase used to describe them in Numenera Discovery. The book only lists three detailed knowledge skills, that again being understanding, crafting, and salvaging Numenera. Page 119 of Numenera Destiny, however, provides insight into the two other skill categories, this time using the game's crafting system as an example. The first is what might be considered general skills, those that provide the player with a variety of knowledge or experience that could be applied to multiple situations. Page 119 describes carpentry or masonry as being examples of general skills that could apply to crafting objects such as canoes, palisades, and normal buildings. But when it comes to crafting more specific items, such as weapons or armor, the book suggests that characters should become trained in a more specific skill, such as weaponsmithing or armoring. This suggestion, which also includes an example of using crafting Numenera, highlights what are perhaps the three scenarios that each skill category directly addresses. Training in a detailed knowledge skill like crafting Numenera will aid in any task that involves working with the Numenera in a crafting task, whereas weaponsmithing, while not as demanding as crafting Numenera, is a more specific skill which will need to be learned and may only directly apply to tasks involving the crafting of weapons. A more general skill like carpentry, however, can apply to a variety of tasks that involve working with wood. Page 119 of Destiny also gives an example of how skills can be stacked, with an example of using both crafting Numenera and training in bowyering to lower the assessed difficulty of crafting a Numenera artifact that works like a bow by two steps. So let's review these categories. Detailed knowledge in Numenera directly refers to the three Numenera skills, understanding, crafting, and salvaging. As these require detailed knowledge, every character, unless they gain training via character creation, start off with an inability in these three areas. Specific skills directly aid in a very specific task, such as lockpicking, intimidation, deception, healing, or swimming. While there may always be some creative interpretation in terms of how specific skills could be used for other purposes, they almost always will be used for a direct and specific purpose, such as the example of needing weaponsmithing to craft a weapon with greater ease mentioned on page 119 of Numenera Destiny. Specific skills may also involve choosing to become trained in the use of a special ability, such as the example of a character becoming trained in the Mind Slice variant of the Onslaught Esoteri on page 27 of Numenera Discovery. General skills cover broader areas, such as being trained in all social interactions or being trained in a field like leatherworking or metalworking. These might find use in a wide variety of difficulty tasks, and also, as we're about to see, the book suggests that gaining training in general skills can actually boost the effectiveness of specific skills. By breaking skills down into these three categories, detailed knowledge, specific skills, and general skills, we can get a bit more clarity as to how we might conceptualize the thought exercise posited on page 27 in Numenera Discovery. 
In the third to last paragraph of this skill section, the book suggests that a character who's trained in lying but gains training in all social interactions becomes specialized in lying as that falls under the more general skill of social interactions. Lying, being a more specific skill, can be enhanced from a character gaining training in a more general skill, and by thinking of how general skills might enhance other skills. The book does suggest some constraints, however, particularly where is it concerns skills that involve the use of special abilities or combat actions. When a character gains a new skill, either from character creation or as one of the 24 levels of advancement available to Cypher System characters, consider using these guidelines to set the expectations. Becoming trained in a detailed knowledge skill, the only official ones being understanding, crafting, or salvaging, will bring a character out of having the starting inability in these fields, unless they gain training from their descriptor, type, or focus. Becoming trained in a specific skill will give a character an advantage in specific tasks, such as picking a lock, lying to someone, activating a specific esoteric or character ability, or crafting a weapon. These kinds of skills should have direct, clear uses that only with some creative thinking and under unusual situations should they apply to unrelated tasks. Becoming trained in a general skill will give a character an advantage in a variety of tasks, such as becoming trained in all social interactions from the Entertains focus on page 68 of Numenera Discovery. General skills may increase the training level of a more specific skill, as the example on page 27 of Numenera Discovery demonstrates, with the specific skill of lying improving when a character becomes trained in all social interactions. These skills are often represented as wider fields of knowledge and expertise, such as carpentry, geography, or chemistry. Whether you're a GM or player, you should take the time necessary to gain a sense of how many of your skills fall under the detailed knowledge category, specific category, or general category. This will help give you a sense of which skills apply to which situations, and as indicated on page 119 of Numenera Destiny, you may find opportunities to get creative across these categories, observing ways that they may combine to lower the difficulty of a variety of tasks. It's worth mentioning the skills acquired from short, medium, and long-term benefits. These, in some ways, are kind of categories of their own, though, as they're more specific in their application and origin than something like, say, weaponsmithing or understanding Numenera. Expect a future video on this specific topic that will go into more detail. For now, the short and medium-term benefits, according to the book, are more narrative in their form and function. At 2 XP for a short-term benefit, these are valuable things to keep in mind if the player characters are going through an elaborate ruin or very specific challenges that may take up a portion of a campaign. The book itself provides a great example of this with the Citadel of the Iron Saint, a location we might imagine a campaign could spend a few sessions in before moving on. Spending 2 XP in the example provided in the book gives a character training using one facet of the Citadel permanently binding this skill to this location and only becoming possible given the narrative reality of being in this location. Because of this mechanic, GMs should feel encouraged to use and create environments with very specific challenges and facets that are unique to those locations. And the example of the long-term benefit in Numenera Discovery that concerns familiarity, this is a mechanic that had a bit more substance in the original Legacy Core rulebook, involving the addition of a plus one to a die roll related to the topic the character has gained familiarity with. Given that the plus one rule is not printed in Numenera Discovery, the concept can either be ignored or expanded upon. For the most part, however, long-term benefits concern different aspects of the game and the narrative. They shouldn't be overlooked, however, especially for those who find advancement moves a bit too quickly in their games. Giving the players more options to spend XP on is essential in Numenera. The skill categories suggested by this video, like the skill system they're derived from, are malleable, with some skills possibly existing somewhere in between these categories. The exception to that, of course, being the detailed knowledge skills of understanding, crafting, and salvaging Numenera, which the book specifically describes as covering unique applications and requiring said detailed knowledge. It is likely that, even with these categories, your group should have a conversation about what skills are expected in the game. As a GM, do you often call for perception roles? Then consider making perception a unique skill and being clear with players over what perception as a skill will cover. Do you like using terminology from other games like sense motive, animal handling, or sleight of hand? 
Those skills can still cover approximately the same scenarios as they do in their respective games. Just know that in Cypher System, they will work by lowering the difficulty task a maximum of two steps if a character is specialized in that field or activity. Sometimes a session zero is a great time to have this discussion, particularly as players are making their characters and choosing their skills. It helps to go over a hypothetical scenario or two to demonstrate or arrive at a consensus concerning the function of a specific skill, using the three categories outlined in this video as some guidance for skills that may involve detailed knowledge, have a specific or a general purpose. Even in games that have a clear and set definition of skills and their functions, it has been my own experience that every group and table differs in how they rule the use of a certain skill. Interpretation of what a history check or a medicine check in other games has been something we've likely all experienced. The skill system in Numenera via the Cypher system operates with this assumption built in. It provides a clear mechanical framework for what skills should do mechanically. Training in a skill lowers that task by one step while being specialized lowers it by two, and no single skill can ever lower a task by more than two steps. But other skills might work together to stack up and lower the difficulty beyond what a single skill could do. Whether you use language from other games for skill terms or come up with your own terms, it may help to keep the categories of skills mentioned in this video in mind. Skills may require dedicated knowledge like understanding Numenera, concern specific skill sets like weaponsmithing, or may involve general fields like carpentry and social interactions. Thinking about the system in this way may help you get a sense of which skills work together and which ones are distinct. If a player brings up something they'd like to be trained in, GMs can narrow down what scenarios the skill will apply toward by thinking about whether or not it's a more general or specific skill. If a player isn't sure what skill they'd like to acquire as they advance their character, they can think in terms of very specific or more general scenarios, and this will provide a better sense of what actions they'd like their character to be better at. Maybe they specifically want to focus on deception, and so will choose lying or deception as a skill, but perhaps they'd instead like to just raise all of their social interactions across the board, in which case becoming trained in all social interactions might be the better path. Above all, the most important thing to memorize from the book where it concerns skills is how they can lower task difficulties and which skills require training in order to avoid having an inability. The language you use and the scope of scenarios they'll apply to is something that can be tuned from game to game or evolve over the course of a campaign as it fits the style of play that you prefer. Skills can be as thoroughly detailed and defined and clear cut or as general and as adaptable as your game requires. If you found this video helpful in breaking down skills in the Cypher system, please consider subscribing to The Infinite Construct for more Numenera, Cypher System, and science fantasy gaming content.